it's probably my weakness, you know, as well as my strength. Mm -hmm. My weakness too, right? I'm like so fascinated by diverse things, you know, and it speaks to my life because like even when I was in school, like I was playing in a hip hop jazz band and I was also playing in a Jewish klezmer band and they would always peg me for the orchestra because they needed a good trombone player and I happened to be on campus. You know, it's like I always was like kind of flipping my hat and like maybe I never really found one thing that I just wanted to focus on that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm still like, you know, on the path, so. How to write a song, how to write a song. This is week 15 of the resolution of life to write a song a week. I'm particularly excited about this episode because I got to interview my friend John Speck, who is a trombone player, multi-instrumentalist, singer-songwriter, and he added a beautiful trombone part to the final song, and it's so cool and I'm so grateful. But before we get to the episode, I must tell you this crazy story, which is the following. I've worked with John for a couple of years. We've always been friendly, and lately we've been just talking about philosophical things, you know, music and the meaning of it all. And we got to talking about the fact that he released an album several years ago of original songs. And I was like, oh my god, I would love to listen to it. The album's called Mofongo. The group he was playing with at the time was called Bacon Bits. So a couple days later, he brings me the CD. And as I looked at the album art, I had a flashback to when I had a radio show with a couple of my friends in college when I used to grab CDs from the stacks and just burn a bunch of albums to uh, my computer so that I could listen to them later. So I go home and I'm like, huh, let me look this up. I type in bacon bits. The album has been sitting on my computer this entire time, you guys, for like 10 years and I never listened to it. I thought that was freaking cool, dude. And I had a great time talking to him and asking him a bunch of weird questions, and he was so down to just talk. We got on the topic of childhood, and this is what he had to say about a memory that he had. Both of my parents have always been like self-employed, creative people, and so like I think I've, in my life, I've emulated that a lot. You know, like trying to find different ways to be creative. Mm -hmm. Because that's like the happy place, you know? Like, yeah. I would often, there was a good portion of my youth when I was growing up when my mother had a business, a women's clothing store, mm -hmm. and I didn't have anywhere to go after school, so I'd like come down and I'd be hanging out in the back of this women's clothing store. <laughs> and my mom would set up, like she had this whole painting station so that when there was, it was slow, like she would paint t-shirts, she would make these like oh, cool. hand-painted t-shirts, and so she would always like make sure I had a setup so like I could, I could paint or like, you know, just... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of creativity. She would like volunteer, she'd come into school and like make paper mache masks. She was an art teacher at one point in her life and I think she never like really, like she enjoyed that and she never like lost, even though she became a business woman, she never like lost that sense of creativity and, and you know, art and she wanted to share that. So she would come into school and volunteer and we'd, we'd make you know, masks out of clay and then you'd do paper mache on top of the masks. That's really beautiful. I'm always looking for opportunities to share my heart with people, you yeah. know, and, and like to try to figure out what makes them tick, and maybe we can vibrate together and get to a higher place than just the mundane, like chit chat, small talk, you know. Yeah. But it can't be done on demand either. Like, it has true. to come from like that whimsical, like mysterious place, yeah. you know. I'm feeling inspired by this memory that John shared with me about his mom and his parents being creative people and uh, self-employed business owners. My parents also had a business growing up and that had a huge influence on me as well. So it got me thinking about parenthood and how just as a kid, just sort of observing your surroundings has such a huge impact on you even more so sometimes than actual lessons that your parents teach you. It's more just the everyday surroundings. 
I thought of a chorus, I think. Yeah, this idea of what I watched you do. What I watched you do. Hmm. What I... I like that. It's pretty already. I think that's cool. I want to think about those different images of what... both what John was describing and also examples in my own life of things that I observed that had a big impact on me. some kind of differentiation between the chorus and the verse, but that's not really coming to me at the moment. All right, let's, let's think about lyrics. So, painting in the back room. Painting in the back room. In a place that's yours. That was really important to me my whole life, seeing my parents work for themselves. That's really cool. Um, because even then, when they worked for other people, they took that um, independence to those jobs. I think about it with my dad, because he's so good at his work and he's so intelligent. I mean, both my parents are, we've discussed this. That sort of independent spirit, and it's almost like he cares what people think about him, you know, in terms of he's always kind and sweet to people, but at the same time he also has that not giving a shit because he knows he is the shit. That confidence of, I'm not kowtowing to you, I am me. John watching his mother be creative, that's so cool, and I relate to that piece of it as well. Painting in the back room of a place that's yours. Living on your own terms. Living on your own terms. Sure. That sounds, that's kind of basic, but we'll go with it. That was actually, uh, maybe I'll insert this John songwriting tip that actually it's one of the codified tips of the 100 so far. Um, just go with it, number 55. Songwriting tips. What comes to mind? Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Try to turn off the inner critic and just go with it. Like whatever the idea is, just go with the idea and try to complete it. I'm going with it. Living on your own terms. This sounds kind of 90s-ish, does it? It's reminding me of some 90s song, I think. What's up, cat? Opening your own doors. Doors. Again, I feel it's basic, but we'll go with it. Well, I mean, it's not basic. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's kind of a cliche, right? Like, oh, the idea of opening doors, um, opening your, opening your own doors. But that's one of my favorite thing about things about my mom. She was one of the few women in her industry on the forefront in Silicon Valley, like in the 70s. And the whole opening your own doors thing. It's also that idea of you know a gentleman opens the door for the lady. But, in this case, it's like a metaphor. You get it. What I saw you do. So let me think of a memory I have. I keep thinking about when I was sick, and so I went to their office in Menlo Park, and I laid on- they had a futon in there. And I just was there all day, like sort of napping on and off all day, but sort of listening as well, and listening to them interact as adults. It was the first time I heard my mom swear, actually. And you know, I'm uh, such a huge fan of swearing. I remember being scandalized by it, but also feeling very uh, important that I was able to be, even if they thought I was asleep, uh, but I was able to observe them talking about work amongst themselves, talking about whatever client they had, and just being really real and adult, doing adult stuff. Laying on a futon. What rhymes with asleep? Bleep, cheap, cheap, cleep, creep, deep. A lot of weird words I don't think are real. Jeep, keep. It's making me think of quantum leap. Because my parents are science, sciencey nerds. We had a cat that was named Quantum because she took quantum leap. <sighs> Intellectual talk surrounding me. So that's a near rhyme, but we'll go with it. Surrounding me. It's also making me think of uh, John has a little daughter, 
and what is she seeing of him, you know, and I, I think it's so cool, like, she gets to see her and see her parents, you know, who are both creative also, and, you know, she's gonna get to see her dad be, like, this cool musician guy. So maybe for the bridge, I'll, I'll think of, like, and what will they see of me? We need more lyrics, don't we? John talked about seeing his mom create things, creating the masks, making space for playfulness. Alright, so, making space for beauty. An expanse to play. Oh, I like that. An expanse to play. When the world only shows you one thing, know there's another way. Is this the whole thing? I don't know. Painting in the back room of a place that's yours. Living on your own terms. Opening your own doors. What? Making space for beauty 